you're living in Dubai, you will very quickly start to consider whether it makes sense to buy real estate here in Dubai, whether as an investment or as a property for you to live. I myself have been considering this and researching this a ton over the past few months. And in the process, I've spoken to many professionals and I've got a very good idea of the exact process that you would have to go through if you are going to buy property here in the UAE. So in a previous video, I covered the process to rent an apartment here in Dubai. So in this video, I want to cover the process to buy a property here in Dubai. So whichever option you're going for, you know exactly what the process entails, including exact step-by-steps, whether you're buying off-plan already property, as well as all the costs, including all the hidden costs that you might not be aware of if you didn't watch a video like this. I will also tell you how mortgages work here, what kind of rates you might expect, what the terms might be. And I can show you these directly from the source because I have just been inquiring about mortgages myself for my situation. So I can give you all the details and everything you need to know to buy property here in Dubai. So this guide will be broken into two parts off plan and ready property. So when you're buying property in Dubai, you generally have a choice between buying a ready property, which is exactly what you might imagine, a property that is already ready for you to move into right now, or you can buy what is called an off plan property, meaning a property that has not yet been finished, where you essentially buy it directly from the developer in a couple of installments, and then you can move into it when it is ready. And there's pros and cons to each, and we'll cover the process both of these options. But first, let's briefly talk about why you might want to consider buying property in Dubai. Looking at the numbers, it financially actually does make a lot of sense to buy here as long as you're going to stay here at least for a couple of years because when you look at the numbers and you can look at a calculator from this website propertyfinder.ae the prices to buy relative to the prices to rent are actually quite reasonable obviously there's more nuance here many more things you need to consider now i'm making a full video on the exact analysis of buy versus rent based on my analysis so you can have all the numbers where i run the numbers in detail so they can make a very informed decision but with that said, let's talk about the actual process of buying property here. First, let's talk about ready property, which is probably what most people are going to do. I recently got an offer for a mortgage where all I would need to show is six months of personal bank statements showing a monthly balance of at least 25,000 AED every single month, as well as my passport visa, trade license, things like this. But this option would require a 40% down payment. So this is something to consider if you're a self-employed person, most likely you're going to have to put up 40% down as a down payment because because they essentially see you as a more risky person if you're not working for an established company, just how it works. Whereas if you're a salaried person, so you're working for a big company with a regular salary, you can often get a mortgage with a 20% down payment. Now it is possible to get a 20% down payment if you're self-salaried as well, but at least according to what I got right here is that for the 20% down payment option as a self-employed person, my company would need to have a physical office and at least seven employees and demonstrate what is called solid income. And usually the longer you have been in Dubai, the more mortgage option you're going to have often once you have been in Dubai for two years that's sort of the point when you're going to start to have a lot more options so you might need to wait until that two-year mark for you to get a proper mortgage with the best terms so here's an overview of what the steps would look like if you're buying a ready property here in the UAE first you will need to get pre-approval from your bank to get your mortgage this essentially means that the bank is saying yes we are willing to give you this loan and then after that once you find the property and you're willing to buy it that is when you actually get the loan then you need to find an agent slash a brokerage to actually find the property that you want to buy. Now make sure you properly scrutinize and interview the agents that you work with. Dubai is still a bit of a free for all in this real estate space. There's a lot of agents here that have come here two weeks ago. that have never sold a property before. They're just trying to work for their first commission. Now, if you are looking for an agent that you know you can trust, that I can personally vouch for, and you want to avoid all the risk and headache of perhaps going with a wrong agent and things going wrong and things like this, you can check out the first link down in the description down below. We can get on a free discovery call with my business partners who have partnered with an agent that we personally vouch for where essentially if you go with us you get vip service throughout the entire thing to find your property to go through the entire process at no extra cost to you compared to the standard agent commission so whatever agent you work for obviously your next step is going to be to find your apartment or villa or whatever you're looking to buy and once you have made your choice you need to make an offer to the buyer and assuming that this is accepted you can then get your loan from your bank and make the purchase which is going to involve a lot of fees which brings us to the next topic which is all the fees 
fees that you want to consider when you're buying property here. The first and the big one is going to be the Dubai land department fee. Now, this is going to be 4% of the purchase value of your place. So if you just take an example of this property, for example, here that costs 2 million dirhams, the Dubai land department fee is going to total 80,000 dirhams and 580. Your next fee is going to be a mortgage registration fee of 0.25% of the mortgage loan amount. So not the property value, but the mortgage value plus a 290 dirham admin fee, which in this example, if you're putting down 400,000 dirhams, it's gonna be around 4,000 dirhams. Next, you will have what is called a property registration fee, which for properties valued below 500,000 AED is gonna be a flat 2,000 dirhams plus 5% VAT. And for properties valued over 500,000 dirhams, it's gonna be 4,000 dirhams plus 5% VAT. Next, you will have valuation fee. So banks will typically charge this fee to essentially value the property and this is going to be approximately 2,500 to 3,500 dirhams plus 5% VAT. Then you're going to have mortgage processing slash arrangement fees, which is typically 1% of the loan amount, but this is sort of negotiable and depends on the bank. And then you're going to have your real estate agency commission, where the standard is 2% of the property purchase price plus 5% VAT. And then you will also have a Dubai land department mortgage registration fee of 0.25 of the loan amount plus 290 dirhams. So we can see here that in this example, if you're going with a mortgage with a 400,000 down payment on a 2 million property, your total upfront costs are going to be 550,000 dirhams, which do include that down payment. So a total fees on top of the down payment are going to be around 150,000 dirhams upfront. They're going to need to pay before you're allowed to move in. Now, after you own the property in terms of ongoing fees of actually owning the place, obviously you're going to have your utilities. If you're living there yourself, if you're renting it out, your tenant is going to have to pay for those. But on top of that, you're going to have what are called service charges. And this will depend on the building you're in, the community and everything like that. But just looking at some averages, it's going to amount to somewhere between 10 to 20 dirhams per square feet per year. So let's say you have an apartment like this one of around 1,000 square feet, that would result to around 10 to 20,000 a year in reoccurring costs that you're gonna have to pay for owning the place. So that is something to consider. And obviously on top of all this, you need to account for any maintenance, you're gonna need to get furniture, all this kind of stuff. So that takes care of buying ready property. Now let's say you wanna buy an off-plan property. So the way this is gonna work is that Dubai has a lot of property developers that keep building new buildings, even new communities a lot of the time, like MR, Demark, Miraz. So if you're looking for a long-term investment where the pro is that overall it's going to be cheaper than buying ready property, like on average at least for the similar quality of place. But the con is that you're going to need to wait and there's a bit more uncertainty because obviously you can't see the place and front things like this. Then this is an option that you also want to consider. What many people are going to worry about is that what if you invest in an off-plan property, but the place is never finished? What if the developer goes bankrupt? Historically, this was a big risk, but today that cannot happen anymore because in Dubai law, it is required that if you're investing in an off-plan property, any money that you need to pay up front, you're not actually sending it to the developer. You send it to what's called an escrow account, meaning that all that money that you pay for it up front is going to be held in this escrow account that the developer is only going to get after they have delivered the project. And if they never deliver the project, then you are going to get all that money refunded to you. So in that sense, there is no risk as long as you make sure you work with a reputable developer or an agent where you make sure that this escrow account is in place. So I just wanted to cover that because I know many people are going to ask about that, but obviously there's still going to be risk in terms of the market. Like, okay, what if the prices crash before you end up getting your your apartment and things like this. But if you are looking to buy off-land property, then here is the process. First, obviously, you need to do your research, find the right developer. The best, some of the best developers in Dubai are MR, Miraz, Nakiel, Damak. And before you move forward, you want to look out for any red flags. Namely, if they don't have an escrow account, stay far, far away. If they don't have a strong reputation, if the developer doesn't have a good track record of actually delivering these projects on time. So while you are protected in the case of the developer going bankrupt or something, like that as long as you have an escrow account they might still be delayed and that does happen a lot so you want to look at the track record of the developer you want to look at the exact contract details and run that by an expert then you want to look at the details of the payment plan so all of these developers are going to have different payment plans for actually in what kinds of installments and when you're supposed to pay for it it might come in the format of you pay 10 percent up front and then 90 percent during construction you might need to pay 40 percent up front and it's really really going to vary some are even offering payment plans by the payment payment plan extends for after it is already completed. So you might only pay 50% before it's completed and then 
50%, let's say over the next one to two years after it is completed. So it really, really depends. And you want to consult with a developer or agent for the exact payment plan to make sure that it is right for you. After you have made your decision, you can essentially reserve the deposit. And to do this, you're going to fill what's called a reservation form that includes basic details about the property, the price, the schedule, things like this. And you're going to pay a deposit, which is going to be non-refundable, typically around 10 to 15% of the purchase price. After that, you're going to sign what's called the sale and purchase agreement. There's an example right here. It looks something like this. Obviously, thoroughly go through this. Make sure you understand it, run it by an expert. And after you sign it, you have now committed to this off-plan purchase. And at this time, you're going to need to register register your off-land property with the Dubai land department through what's called an OGUD system. So this is the official government system that essentially ensures that all your rights are protected during the construction phase, that you actually officially own this off-plan property and things like this. And you're going to need to pay the Dubai land department fees, which are 4% of the purchase price, which is the same fee that we talked about before for the ready property. But some developers offer promotions where they will essentially cover these fees for you. So you can look for these promotions. Again, if you book that call down below, we can also help you find the right off-plan property, find the kind of developers that might have their promotions and things like this. So if you're interested, again, no extra cost to you. In the case of ready property, we just get the normal commission that you would have to pay anyway. And in the case of off-plan property, it's also no extra cost to you because it's the developer that then pays a commission to us if you do find a property with our services. And after that, you simply gonna make payments according to the payment plans and these payments are usually made using what are called post dated checks so you're gonna actually write out all the checks according to the payment plans and you're gonna post date them meaning that the money using that check can be drawn only on or after the date of the date on that check and you're going to do that according to the payment plan so just make sure you're in a position where when that check comes due you actually have the money in the account and things like this and you're going to monitor the status of your off plan property using the UAE real estate authorities website. They have an official platform where you can see the status, where they're going to be required to regularly update you and things like that. So make sure you check that regularly to stay up to date. And once the property is ready, you're going to conduct what is called a pre handover inspection, also called snagging, where the developer is going to invite you to the property to inspect it, where you can make sure that everything looks good. You're going to check for any defect issues, any structural problems, incomplete finishes, things like this, which you can either do yourself or hire a professional to do for you. And if you encounter any problems, you're going to make a list of it called the snag list they're going to send to the developer and at this stage you're going to make the final payments whatever you need to do according to the payment plan and the property is now yours and once this has happened you need to now register this property with the dubai land department to get the title deed so the title deed is a document that every property has that lists the owner where you're officially now listed as the owner of this property to make sure that it's officially yours you're going to need to pay any outstanding fees that you haven't paid yet like government fees things like this which are going to be by the way all the exact same fees that we covered before for the ready property minus any mortgage fees because you're not going to have those assuming you obviously didn't get a mortgage for an offline property and now the property is officially yours it's ready so you can move in get utilities set up things like that or you can rent it out or resell it or whatever you're trying to do and one thing that some people will ask about is what's the deal with leasehold and freehold in the uae now in most cases in the uae even as a foreigner you can get freehold property meaning that you actually also own the land that your property sits on if you're buying a villa in some cases in some areas freehold is only reserved for emirati or gcc citizens in those cases you can get what's called a leasehold where technically you don't own the land but it is just leased to you but in most cases this is going to be for a period of 99 years so basically it's not going to matter that much because 99 years well most likely you're not going to live beyond that anyway so not a big thing to consider but something that someone might ask about so whichever process you go through and i know this was a lengthy video because i wanted to cover every single step a big benefit is that if your property that you buy is valued at above 2 million dirhams you're going to qualify with what is called the golden visa now this is the best kind of visa you can have in the uae because it's a 10 year residence permit but because this video is already very long i actually made a separate video where i cover in detail the benefits and the process to get the golden visa so if you're interested in that make sure to watch this video right here and again, if you're looking to buy property, you're looking for an agent where you can go through all of this with a VIP service where you don't need to know anything, then make sure to book that free call down in the description. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.